Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Oh, one last push, and it's the weekend. <laughs> oh, thank you for choosing LBC this morning. We've got quite a lot to go through, and we begin with a story that uh, I'm not I'm entirely sure that it doesn't deserve to be described as very emblematic of our age. Julian Assange hailed as an absolute hero by many who now consider him to be close to a disgrace. And the facts of his alleged crimes in Sweden, of course, haven't changed one jot since he was hailed as a hero. It might sound a little bit odd, but it reminded me at the time of Roman Polanski and the apparent ability of certain people to turn off their moral compass when dealing with somebody whose work they admired so much so that what you might describe as personal moral transgressions allegedly get dwarfed by the public performance. Do you know, I, I get here every morning, I sit there, I have chat with colleagues before we come on air and obviously I go through the newspapers with a fine tooth comb and spend a little bit more time than I should probably on social media. But I never know what's going to come out of my gob until the night goes on. Where the hell did Roman Polanski just come from? It works, though, doesn't it? Because, and I stress, Julian Assange denies all the allegations um, of uh, sexual assault and etc. that have been levelled against him. I stress that completely. But Roman Polanski, of course, um, convicted and yet given a free pass by many of the great and the good in the... I suppose we'd have to describe it loosely as the liberal establishment, on the grounds, presumably, that his work is so good and so powerful that you overlook the personal issues. And, and I, think, I think people did the same with Assange. I, I always hesitate, but do you know what the big problem with social media is? Is that you, you, it's actually more reliable than your own memory. I, I'm pretty sure I've never gone in hard on Julian Assange one way or the other because I found the subject too complex, to be honest with you, too complicated. And while he clearly did a service of sorts by revealing atrocities and, and war crimes committed by our side, by the Allies in, in um, Iraq and Afghanistan, footage indeed, uh, that, that showed completely innocent people being killed unnecessarily, sort of collateral casualties. He did it in a way that was almost utterly unfiltered, so that these huge dumps of information reached the public sphere with the genuine concerns and reservations that some of what was contained within these uh, files, I nearly said discs, I was showing my age, I should have said tapes, <laughs> talking, um, might actually compromise ongoing situations. I can't say one way or the other whether those uh, fears were founded, but they were clear and present. And, and that, that's why it's a, a really interesting story and possibly a very emblematic one. He's clearly gone in a slightly odd direction since being holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy. And looking at him being taken out and reading some of the reports regarding his personal hygiene, um, I would not be surprised to see an industrial-sized delivery of shaken vac to the Ecuadorian embassy later today to put the freshness back. But... And then there's the big, big problems with um, uh, the Trump campaign. Huge issues there. But again, I, I, I don't know quite how we're supposed to negotiate, stroke, navigate these sort of observations. Because the Trump campaign... I mean, you can't even exaggerate anymore. When you say Trump spoke repeatedly about how much he loved WikiLeaks during the presidential campaign, but now that the heat is on, he'll probably deny that he'd ever even heard of it. And you say stuff like that, and you think, well, come on. Even Trump isn't going to attempt... Uh, a, a deception on that scale to his followers, however credulous they may have proved to be. Surely, surely everyone can remember him standing up on stage saying, I love WikiLeaks. And, and if he were subsequently to turn around and say, I don't know anything about it, then surely even Trump wouldn't attempt a deception on, on that scale. Surely even he doesn't hold his followers in such contempt that he believes they'd let him get away with that. Well, that'll Let's check. WikiLeaks. I love WikiLeaks. These WikiLeaks, now from WikiLeaks. And fast forward to yesterday. Do you still love WikiLeaks? Uh, I know nothing about WikiLeaks. It's not my thing. And uh, I know there is something having to do with uh, Julian Assange. I've, I've been seeing what's happened with 
uh, Assange, and uh, that will be a determination, I would imagine, mostly by the Attorney General, who is doing an excellent job. So he'll be making a, a determination. I know nothing really about him. It's not my, it's not my deal in life. Oh, OK. Crikey. I had no idea that was going to happen. How remarkable. And some questions still hang over um, reported meetings between Assange and Paul Manafort. Quite a lot of uh, meetings that, that I'm pretty sure did take place that will need to be explored. I can never remember the name of that guy. Got a photograph coming out of the embassy. You campaigned for the alleged paedophile Roy Moore. As always cozying up to the... Um, to the man you just heard, the President of America, accused by multiple women of sexual assault and worse. Can't remember his name. Got a photograph coming down the stairs. It'll come to me, I'm sure, before one o'clock today. So, leaving all that aside, what do we know about him? And oddly enough, I, I, I'm going to ask you today to tell me what your position is on uh, the facts, what you think the facts are, rather than what you think about the facts. Because until we've established what the actual facts are, it doesn't really matter what either of us think, does it? We've got to agree on that. So... It was important journalism, in my opinion, when he revealed uh, the war crimes that had been committed by American forces and others, but it was also illegal. So that is not a straightforward issue. That is one that judges have to decide. Similarly, he was accused by more than one woman of sex crimes in Sweden, and he skipped bail before being extradited to Sweden to answer those charges, to face those allegations, which may now be resurrected or revivified. And that's also a fact. But his argument is that he skipped bail not to avoid facing the sexual assault charges in Sweden, but to avoid being extradited to America, where he would face trial for the, I think, the demonstrable crime of having published classified information, knowingly. So it's complicated, right? Here's my take for what it's worth as, as just one pair of eyes watching this saga unfold. It would be right to extradite him to Sweden. It would not be right to extradite him to America at this point in proceedings. The reason why I, I, I spoke unkindly of Jeremy Corbyn a moment ago is because he's made the second point, which I think is entirely defensible. Let's make that absolutely clear. But he made it without reference to the first point. And Diane Abbott, who is a very close ally of Jeremy Corbyn's, of course, popped up this morning displaying, I think, quite profound ignorance and, and, and a degree of... Um, uh, insensitivity at the very least regarding those allegations in Sweden. So when you're looking to persuade people who aren't currently on Team Corbyn that you are somebody trustworthy and open-minded, tweeting about Assange without reference to the sex allegations while claiming that, that it would be wrong of the government to extradite him on the, on the, on the whistleblowing allegations seems to me deliberately obtuse. It could have been just a, a, a mistake a bit of incompetence, but it, it seems to me to be deliberately obtuse, almost stubborn in its refusal to acknowledge the real reasons why he was holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy. 11 minutes after 10 is the time. So, he faced charges of sexual assault. He skipped bail to avoid being extradited to the country where he would face them, but he argued, I think quite persuasively, that he really skip bail, not to avoid those charges or allegations, but to avoid being extradited to America where he could conceivably have faced torture or, well not torture obviously, but he could have faced the death penalty. Um, you, you can get an assurance from a country like America if you're contemplating extraditing a citizen or, 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 or a prisoner to that country that you won't face the death penalty, that assurance would be binding, but I, I and this is where I move into opinion rather than fact. I don't think we should extradite anybody to Donald Trump's America because he's proven the regime is clearly corrupt. Um, uh, there are people within it who aren't corrupt, but the Attorney General at the moment uh, endorsing the talk of spying. It's quite terrifying to watch a, a Western liberal democracy descend at breakneck speed into a sort of uh, yeah, bovine authoritarian tribute act. Uh, and, and so that, that's very personal and probably wrong and almost certainly legally ignorant of me. But there we are. We wouldn't extradite someone to Saudi Arabia, would we? Especially after what they did to, to Khashoggi. So why on earth would we extradite someone to Donald Trump's America? Barack Obama's America would have been a very different place. For me, at least. But again, as I say, that's probably insupportable. Um, so 13 minutes after 10, 
That's it, isn't it? Isn't that just the end of it? I know everyone's supposed to have a strong position, everyone's supposed to have a strong opinion, but the stuff he revealed about what American forces had done in Iraq and Afghanistan was of international importance and was profoundly in the public interest, I believe. So you could ask the first thing that you could argue with. No, it wasn't. He should never have revealed any of this. Be interested to hear from ex-military about that. I also make it clear from the very beginning that this will be one of those hours where callers to the programme quite possibly, probably, almost certainly may know more about the, the, the details of this story than I do. I, I keep up on most issues. I can't be absolutely copper-bottomed and across everything. So, that's number one. It was really important and powerful, if not journalism, then at least revelation. Number two, of course, the women who've accused him of crimes in Sweden should have their case heard. Of course they should. And therefore, we should extradite him to Sweden if a request were to come in. I think. Uh, but those two, it's like walking and chewing gum, right? You, you can support, surely you can support both of those positions. Not sure he should be extradited to America, sure he should be extradited to Sweden. And it's not up to us. The, the judicial system, <clears throat> the criminal justice system, will decide on both of those issues. And that is, I think, as it should be, or not? I don't know. What do you think? 0345 6060 So I'll read out a couple of these today because um, I, I thought it was quite interesting yesterday to, to, to take the lid off the, the more toxic strains of the social media feeds into the studio, which I, I, I don't normally consult, but with that terror attack in Christchurch and Sadiq Khan, a regular recipient of utterly vile abuse when he appears on this programme, I, I just take the lid off temporarily to have a look at what, what the... Um, uh, what the sewer looks like. So here's one. Allegations which were not proven and were dropped. You going to mention that James No Brain? Um, well, I, I just did mention it, but it, it doesn't make your contribution to the programme any less ignorant or stupid than it was when you sent it. The, the allegations were not dropped. There, there was a, a time limit on them, a sort of statute of limitations that was exceeded, but as has been made clear by the lawyer for one of the victims, they will be seeking to, um, uh, to, to reignite those allegations. They were not dropped. They timed out because he was hiding in the Ecuadorian embassy, um, says James No Brain. <sighs> so, you see what I mean, though? It's, it's one of those issues where people who aren't very bright and don't really understand stuff have picked a side very, very early and just started hurling abuse at the other side. And that's the other thing I'd like to understand. Wh wh where does the fandom for... Julian Assange come from. We also know that he quite deliberately dropped a load of emails that turned into the biggest red herring of the American presidential campaign, undermined Hillary Clinton and delivered arguably the White House to Donald Trump. No wonder he's saying he doesn't know anything about them. That, that I think, is a given as well. So that, for me, would be the point at which his story became less complicated. He has intervened, and also the Russians, of course, are, are friendly, it would seem, with Assange, and he also tweeted, I think, scepticism about the Russian responsibility for the Novichok attack in Salisbury. So, for my money, when he first arrived on the scene with this massive revelation, he was, he was a force for good. He then got corrupted, presumably by power and detention. And I don't know the detail, I beg your pardon, I don't know the veracity or otherwise of the allegations he faces in Sweden, but that doesn't matter in the context of what he's been doing while holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy, because what he did there was, whether at Russia's behest or not, he helped Donald Trump enormously, which is why Donald Trump now has to pretend that he doesn't know who he is or what WikiLeaks was. I love WikiLeaks. I have no idea what WikiLeaks is. Amazing, that. Pivot in three years. So, what am I asking you today? Well, number one... Have I got the facts right? 0345 6060973. Number two, where does the fandom come from now? I understood where it came from back then, but given that he has essentially betrayed the trust of everybody who looked after him, not least the leading public figures who paid his legal fees, where does the fandom come from now? Is it like all the other issues we discuss? at the moment every day? Is it just stubbornness? Is it the fact that the evidence has changed but you can't change your position because you were so heavily invested in the last lot of evidence? I hope that makes some sense. Um, there are a couple of phone lines free into the studio. 0345 973 is the number that you need. Is it just a touch of the Polanskis? The allegations, which he denies, are vile but people can somehow see through them because they're still so admiring of the public performance. I think that probably works. 
I look forward to you explaining to me why it doesn't. I, I think it's just a question of chewing gum and walking, as the saying goes. You, you can do both at the same time. You can feel it would be wrong to extradite him to America, but absolutely right to extradite him to Sweden. Full stop, leave it to the lawyers. No? Not really the most provocative way to start a phone in, but let's see where it leads us. John is in Romford. John, what would you like to say? Uh, good morning, young James. How are you doing, sir? Very well, John. What's on your mind? Yeah, James, look, um, I think the problem with w w what we're facing here is that Julian Assange has really exposed these people. And, you know, he, he Julian Assange exposed me to some stuff that, you know, that I can't forget in my mind, right? You know, I heard American soldiers trying to justify the murdering of a four and a, and a seven-year-old children, right? Trying this was on the Chelsea, the this was on the Chelsea Manning dump, for want yeah. of, of a better word. Yeah. And they used and the word know, dump because it was unfiltered. They didn't pick and choose. They just put the whole lot out there. Yeah. I mean, you know, when, when he exposed that, I mean, he has pulled the American pants down. You know, well, the Western forces, actually. He's pulled their pants down in public and they really don't like it. Look, I've got no time for anyone who's been accused of, 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 um, sex, of anything sexual. I've got no time for those type of people, right? And, and well, Britain, I mean, You I, should have time for perhaps the accused until, until they've faced trial or until those allegations, because some people who are accused of, sorry to split hairs know, mate, but some people who are accused are innocent. I think it's important to remember I know, that. I, I, I know that, James. I know yeah. that. I, I know that. And you know, but maybe may a poor choice of words. Right? Yeah, but, fair enough. But, um, the, the, the problem, the problem that we're facing is this. Right? I don't think that we should send him to Sweden oh. because if we send if we send him to Sweden, there's a good chance that the Americans might get hold of him. So if so, so but there's there's a good a, chance we, that they'll get hold of him here, mate. That's why he hid in the Ecuadorian embassy. There's yeah, no, no, I know, I know, but 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 Britain can protect him. And why Britain can't Sweden be protect him? Because uh, b b well, well, we I don't think that we can trust. We we don't we don't know if we have enough trust in Sweden not to send him there. He can be tried in this country for a crime that he's committed elsewhere. You know that that's not a problem. So so if he has committed that crime, right, he can be tried in this country for, no, for that crime. Can, can he? I'm not should, sure you can try. Well, I mean, if he's, well, I'm, if sure, he's I'm sure that they could introduce new laws. Well, hang on, mate. Listen, they, they, they we're, we're supposed that. we're supposed to be slowly shaving away at the things we're not sure about, not adding loads of new ones to the mix. Well, and why? Well, why do you? Well, no, no, no. Well, of course it's far too important. That's why I'm insisting that we don't add things we're not sure about to an already complicated right. scenario. You don't know whether he can be tried here for a crime committed, allegedly committed in America, <laughs> and I, no, I think well, it's highly unlikely, frankly. But I don't understand why you're no, worried. No, America, not, not crimes committed in America. Well, you, can't, you can't try him here for, for an alleged sexual assault in Sweden. It's, well, it's his jurisdiction, I mean, mate, isn't it? It's the rule of law. But again, uh, again, no, no, no stop talking while I'm trying to stop you saying things that you don't understand. <laughs> okay. It's absolutely fine, but there's enough confusion and ignorance out there without just throwing more at the wall. <laughs> okay. Okay. Why, why, why would you be more worried about how the Swedish government might behave, or the Swedish judiciary might behave, <laughs> than the British judiciary. Just think a bit before you answer. Don't come rushing out of the, of, of the traps. Given that our government is at the most dysfunctional and ridiculous that it's been ever, mm. and the Swedish government, well, in a nutshell, isn't. Did you just mention Brexit? I didn't have to. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, look, James, the problem that I'm facing is this, yeah? I don't want him exposed to the Americans because he, he's exposed things that the Americans didn't want exposed. And we have to ask, who is policing the America? Who's policing? No, who's you just, policing I, I love you, John. I love you like a brother. Um, but you are just repeating things now. And, and you're not really giving me a better understanding of the issue. I, I can come up with a strong opinion without having a full grasp of the facts. I'm yeah. kind of looking for, 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 for people who who aren't doing that today, with, with the greatest of love and respect. Who is policing the policeman isn't really an illuminating contribution to this conversation, is it? No, I know, James, but, but, but I mean, we, you know, we're, we're, we are really a real stalemate on this one because, you know, you know there, there are so much of us who, who, who are behind Julian Assange with what he has exposed. We, you know, we are fully behind what well, he okay. has exposed. Okay, are, 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 are you behind the... Are you behind the... Uh, release of all Hillary Clinton's private emails that didn't really reveal anything significant, but allowed Donald Trump to pretend that she was a she was a wrong one, while key members of his campaign were actually already so criminal that they are now in jail. I uh, know that that is that is very. That now that's um, kind of what I mean by how complicated this is. So you're not a big fan of Julian Assange. You're a big fan of Chelsea Manning and Julian Assange's role in bringing what Chelsea Manning discovered to the public field. But at the time, everyone thought he'd done it out of the reasons you describe, which was some sort of sense of 
mission or crusade or public importance, my limited knowledge of the case would suggest that subsequent to the Chelsea Manning incident, the Chelsea Manning story, the Chelsea Manning scoop, subsequent to that, his conduct has suggested um, that it wasn't actually done on, on principle or out of uh, some some overweening sense of, of crusade and integrity. Again, I'm open to correction on that, but only from people with the greatest of respect, or only from people who know more than I do. And that wouldn't be that hard, I don't think. Carolina is in Wandsworth. Carolina, what, what would you like to say? Um, I think it was all to do with the difference in the extradition treaties that Sweden has with the US and the UK has with the US. And he felt that because he was, um, he always denied the rape charges, which, you know, is, is well, people generally kind do. of par for the course. Yes. Yeah. But I think that was what it was to do with, that he felt that um, because the rape... Um, no, we, we wouldn't extradite him to America because he hadn't actually been charged with anything in America. They weren't seeking his extradition. He was yes, worried that if he but... went to Sweden to face the sex charges, the, the, the sex crime charges, then America might intervene. And, and I don't think there's... I think we do have a... I, do you know, this is interesting with the reference to Brexit, isn't it? Do, do we have the same extradition arrangements with America as no. Sweden does or as, as fellow no, members every, of the European every... Union? Yes, everybody has a different treaty. But I thought they treaty. made all our laws, Caroline. I thought they made all those laws in Strasbourg no, and we had to abide not. by them. Sadly so we have completely not, different dear. extradition arrangements with a fellow European Union country. Yes. Oh. Absolutely. Well, it's a bit late now, but thank you for the lesson. <laughs> so none of those are, because that's what the European arrest warrant, but that's only between European nations members of the eu of course it is yeah so all the other extradition treaties are standalone so, with each country so what, what i mean i didn't i don't think this is controversial but given that this is one of those issues that seems to lend itself completely to the footballification of everything it, it almost certainly is there is a strong case for extraditing him to sweden there is a strong case for not extraditing him to america yes there is but the prosecutors, the Swedish prosecutors, wanted to interview him yes. in the embassy about it. Um, and I think that that was when they actually got to the point where they weren't sure that there was a case to... Um, no, that, that bit I don't think is true. But again, I will double check on all of this. Uh, I, the, 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 the point was, of course, that if you're accused of crimes, you don't really get to call the tune to which the prosecutors have to dance. And one of the lawyers for the victims has certainly said she's very, very keen to have her day in court, which would rather give the lie to any notion that the that the accusations have lost their weight or their or their urgency. Marco writes that the issue leaves a lot of people in a quandary. WikiLeaks has shed light on potential war crimes. I'd remove potential from that paragraph, Marco. Um, and cover-ups of inhumane activity in war. However, Assange's self-centred manner pushes the questions of freedom of speech and information to one side. And you haven't even mentioned Sweden. You're not the first to observe this. I think it becomes truer almost every day. It, it seems to be an age in which... We find it almost impossible to change our minds or admit mistakes. Um, I'm very guilty of this myself, but conscious of how important it is to try to be different from that. Is the Assange story that simple? I mean, a lot of people have changed their minds, especially people that were closest to him, people that paid his legal fees, actually, shortly before he um, uh, took refuge in a cupboard at the Ecuadorian embassy. Is, 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 or is it more nuanced than that? Is it more than stubbornness? Why can't you just say he did some really important stuff with Chelsea Manning? Subsequent to that, his conduct, both public and private, appears to rather give the lie to the, to the notion that he's some sort of heroic crusader. And he also faces allegations of um, sexual criminality in Sweden that he should probably face. Full stop. Next topic. I don't know. The phone lines are open. Rachel Venables is here. Yesterday, she was there outside the embassy and later in court, I think. Yes, uh, Westminster Magistrates Court, yes. What happened? 
quite a lot, actually. I mean, it was a fascinating couple of hours, I think partially because, obviously, what uh, he'd been worried about and hiding for for so long all seemed to come crashing down at once. And we had, of course, his, his arrest um, with the police actually being allowed into the embassy after seven years, nearly seven years of him hiding out in there. The police were finally allowed inside. We, of course, saw the video of him being dragged out. And then just a few hours later, he was in the dock in court and he was answering to the two charges. So one was of skipping bail and, of course, the other was at the beginning of these extradition proceedings from the US. Now, just to give you a sense of almost the mood of the court, I mean, certainly as far as the journalists were concerned, there was this mad scramble outside the doors. Everyone wanted to get in and grab what few seats there were. Mm. Then he arrived. Um, he had his, his long white hair tied in a bun, long white beard. He was obviously a lot more composed than the man we saw shouting and gesturing being dragged out of the embassy. Um, he sat sort of waving and giving thumbs up to a supporter in a yellow vest who'd, um, who turned up and had sat in the public gallery as well. So he was fairly animated. And then he also pulled out a book at one point and started reading, um, or, or at least pretending perhaps to read. I'm not sure he could have taken it in particularly well. Was that the book he had in his hand when he was... It was, yes, so Gore Vidal, yeah, something about, about secret statecraft. states and yes, things it's a, like it's that. It's a series of essays about the um, what I suppose has somewhat laughably become known as the deep state but um, Gore Vidal is a, is, a, is a brilliant writer and an astute observer of things but you're right, it's unlikely that Assange was taking much in while sitting in a, in a magistrate's court. He certainly seemed to be reading it I think backwards at one point based on where I saw his eyes going and he was <laughs> <laughs> focused obviously very much on the on the, on the, the, the the judge, focused on the journalist, the people watching him and of course the fact that his, his lawyers actually were about 10-15 minutes late, it seemed they hadn't been told uh, that the case had actually begun um, anyway so after that point we had the the, the demonstrations from both lawyers uh, for the prosecution. One was representing the Crown, one was representing the United States. So this is simply United on the States. skipping bail charge? So the first was on the skipping with. bail charge right. and then just beginning this process because of course extradition hearings, I mean they can take years, this is going to rumble on and on. As far as the bail was concerned, he was asked if he pled guilty or not guilty and he said not guilty. He was then asked to defend himself and he basically refused. He refused to give any evidence in his defence which the judge seemed to find very shocking um, and was one of the reasons I think it, when the judge found him guilty. He seemed to found him guilty very easily. He, and he actually said um, that, this is an actual quote from Judge Michael Snow, he said that Assange's assertion that he has not had a fair trial is laughable. And then he launched this incredible sort of trade against uh, against Assange, saying, yeah. I'm afraid is the behaviour of a narcissist who cannot get beyond his own selfish interests. And at that point, I mean, you know, all the journalists and the people in the public gallery we were almost bowled over backwards by just the venom almost in his voice there. He was, maybe not venom's a bit too strong, but it, it was strong words, certainly. But this is more, perhaps, and you were there and I were, but mm. you, also you've spent a lot more time in court than I have. As a journalist, I hasten to add, not as, a, not as the accused. Um, this is about... In the judge's eyes, Assange showing contempt for due process, presumably, yeah. it's, it, rather than it being anything political. It's how dare you come to my court, plead not guilty and then offer up no defence. Exactly. That makes a mockery of due process and our, and our judicial system. And, and senior lawyers, judges take this very, very, very seriously. Yeah, and there were accusations levelled by his defence against the judge who'd heard his case in the past. Um, the judge yesterday said, well, have you got any evidence for that? And mm. the answer seemed to be a bit of a no, and, and he was furious with that. And it was also just, I think, the, the fact that Assange went through all of the courts. He went through the high court. He went even higher back in 2010, 2011, when he was trying to avoid extradition. And basically what the Judge Snow said yesterday was you have had fair trial after fair yes. trial don't stand here and pretend otherwise, certainly as far as the bail is concerned and in that pure sense I think the judge found it fairly easy to, to find him guilty and he will be sentenced at a later date at Southwark Crown Court that's because a magistrate's court only has the power to sentence up to a certain point, only a few months, whereas in the Southwark Crown Court he can get um, up to 12 months up to a year in prison and for this enough, charge as we saw with the other case you've been covering of Jack Shepherd, the so-called speedboat um, uh, person, if he pleaded guilty, you automatically get a third knocked off. Yeah. And so sometimes, you know, there's all manner of things which judges take into account, you know, when it comes to sentencing. Remorse plays a long way here. Mm. Uh, and I think, again, the fact that Assange pleaded not guilty, uh, but refused to actually give any evidence, refused to open himself up to cross-examination was what the, the judge said. That certainly counted in, against him yesterday. And then the American angle? Well, the American angle really sort of starts to begin now. So he's got another hearing on the 2nd of May. That's the next time we expect to see him in court, though he will appear via video. 
video link. He's, of course, just spent uh, his first night uh, in jail in a cell. He's been remanded in custody. So he'll appear again at Westminster Magistrates on the 2nd of May and expect that to go on for a very long time. I mean, we heard from his lawyer, um, uh, Jennifer Robinson, outside court yesterday. She talked about how this was an affront to the, the protection of journalists and publishers, and they expect to fight this all the while. One Another sort of interesting note, just to, to give you from the court, something that wouldn't really have been reported on yesterday, but I certainly found it quite memorable, was at the end, the judge said to Assange, you know, you do have the ability here not to fight extradition. You could go to the US, face whatever charges they bring against you, serve your time if you need to serve time, and then he said you could get on with your life. And at that point, there was almost a ripple of laughter because, of course, everyone expects if he does go to the US, he could get many, many years in prison. Not at the moment. I, uh, looking only at hacking, mm. conspiracy to hack government computers, um, not publishing classified information, but the, these are things that could change and need to be established before any extradition is negotiated or agreed. And the charge facing him at the moment has a maximum of, I five. think it's five years. Yeah, exactly. But there is a belief, it may be unfounded, there's a belief that once he actually arrives in America, there could be other charges brought against him. Which with is why I've said something slightly probably um, uh, contestable about the difference between sending him to Barack Obama's America and sending him to Donald Trump's America, where it, I guess it's the difference between a civilised country and the Wild West. But, but so, we shall see. I don't expect mm, you to comment on that. No, but just, just one final point. When the judge said that to him, again, there was this ripple of laughter. One of his supporters shouted something and then, almost proving he's still got a sense of humour, Assange looked to the, I'll say, the crowd. He put two thumbs up in the air and he kind of he kind of waved them and he, it was almost a sort of, oh, goody, sarcastic kind of laughter. Um, with clearly gives you an idea of, you know, he certainly is going to fight this and he certainly doesn't believe he can get on with his life after any point of going to America. Watch this space. Rachel Venables, cracking work as always thank you very much indeed 10 42 is the time of course whatever the story you can pretty much guarantee that donald trump will display his abject moral corruption and um he hasn't let us down on this one wikileaks i love wikileaks he's wikileaks now from wikileaks um but yesterday do you still love wikileaks uh, I know nothing about WikiLeaks. It's not my thing. And uh, I know there is something having to do with uh, Julian Assange. I've, I've been seeing what's happened with uh, Assange, and uh, that will be a determination, I would imagine, mostly by the Attorney General, who is doing an excellent job. So he'll be making a uh, determination. I know nothing really about him. It's not my, it's not my deal in life. 10.43 is the time. Um, you remember, I think, when I mentioned a moment ago about the importance of recognising how powerful the Chelsea Manning revelations were with regard to war crimes committed by our allies, committed by American troops, um, innocent people killed, including journalists. You will remember when I said that, because I said it. Now, th these are the interesting things that happen and that we still haven't got a proper handle on here. Twitter account with lots of numbers in it. Uh, Mr. James O'B won't talk about press freedoms and U.S. government killing journalists and war crimes. Assange has exposed he'd rather go with Assange the rapist, just like Polanski. Notice liberal MSM and MPs are cowardly taking this route, and they can bash Jeremy Corbyn too. Win-win. Um, I, I blocked that immediately, but... I, I, I'm left with one question, uh, which is whether or not that is just an independent idiot or whether that is some sort of Russian-sponsored troll. And I don't, I don't know how we'll know that. If you were still dedicated to this notion of disruption in the, in the way that Trump and Brexit have completely disrupted the West, what would you be doing now? Bigging up Jeremy Corbyn? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just putting it out there. Nathan's in Barnet. Nathan, what's going on? Hi, James. Thanks for talking to me again. Um, I'm, I'm calling in uh, to discuss more of the American angle, yes. given my my obvious background. <laughs> um, uh, as far as what you're saying in regards to, I mean, him being in Sweden and to face the charges, I think, I mean, I, I completely agree with you on mm. that. Um, uh, I completely disagree with how the Americans are, are handling things, however. Go on. Um, I'd like to compare what what he's what he's done with with uh, Chelsea Manning, and right now that's all that he's charged with. Yes. Right, he hasn't been charged for anything to okay. do with uh, Hil Hillary Clinton. And I should also put it out there that I am also not a big fan. Sure. Uh, so I don't I don't really like. I, I mean, I'm a Democrat, so I obviously don't like what he did to to Hillary Clinton, and I and I don't like Assange personally. But I do think that it's important that we uh, protect people. 
like him and people like Chelsea Manning. I so, think, yeah, but uh, for that specific issue, and, and of course, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm lionising Barack Obama slightly, but only in comparison to Trump. We need to remind ourselves that, that it was his regime that kept Chelsea Manning in solitary confinement, and there are lots of questions about extrajudicial killings and, and drone strikes and all, all that sort of thing. No one's portraying anyone as a saint. That seems to be the problem. You're either 100% saint or 100% right. sinner. Assange is a wonderful example of someone who's both. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the comparison I was looking to make is to the Pentagon Papers. I'm not sure how much you're aware with those. The Pentagon Papers? Yeah. The New, well, the Vietnam, New York Times stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah okay. exactly. So Ells Ellsberg was was basically Manning in that case. And, yeah, and the, that's and a good point. Ta Te technology was different, but the story's the same. Yeah, exactly, and the Times would have been WikiLeaks. So and what it is, it's malfeasance by your own government. Uh, what, what is journalists, journalism's responsibility? Um, and the, 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 the pithy little catchphrase is publish and be damned, isn't it? Right. And that's what he did. Uh, and, and that's why you see that in isolation, and then extraditing him to America becomes a morally very questionable decision to take versus extraditing him to Sweden, which is a no-brainer, unless there is that suggestion that extraditing him to Sweden would somehow entail extradition to America. That doesn't really work anymore because he's, he's going to be facing charges in this country. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, in a nutshell, I'm going to say you don't think he should be extradited to your home country because you think he did a public service under, under, under the banner of journalism. Cer certainly not over what he's been charged now. If they no. want to find some additional charges, maybe something that he did over the Clinton thing, I'm, I'm not sure. They'd have to investigate that and maybe find a different charge, but not not over this. And the charge that they've even got him with assisting, it, like conspiring with Chelsea Manning and yeah. basically saying that that he's that he helped protect uh, helped protect her yes. from uh, evade the authorities. Well, who, what journal, journalist doesn't protect, their, protect their source? Yeah, it's a great point. It's a great point, and and it is it is. Uh, I wonder if. <laughs> probably a bit over optimistic of me but i wonder if this is a is a slight sea change in our relationships with each other um in the media and the and the public sphere you just recognize assange is both good and bad he is nuanced he did some terrible things in the context in my opinion of the american presidential campaign he is accused of doing terrible things in the context of sex crimes in sweden but bringing the revelations that chelsea manning risked in many ways risked her life certainly compromised risked her security to bring to the public eye entirely on principle, entirely in the belief that the public deserved to know this stuff, he did something rather special and important. So you see it divide along right-left lines, and you get yet another illustration of just how damaging and dangerous it is to divide everything along right-left lines. Now, let me just read you a few lines from a January 2017 report issued by the United States Intelligence Community. It's called Assessing Russian Activities and Intentions in Recent U.S elections um and it, it this is describing something called the internet research agency which rather unhelpfully is of course also known as the ira um the likely financier of the so-called internet research agency of professional trolls located in saint petersburg is a close putin ally with ties to russian intelligence um, they previously were devoted to supporting Russian actions in Ukraine and started to advocate for President-elect Trump as early as December 2015. And it was via the International Research Agency that the so-called Podesta emails reached the public um, uh, space, a, a sort of combination of work between WikiLeaks and them. So, so these questions are really serious, and it's them that undermine, it's those questions that undermine the portrayal of Assange as some sort of... Uh, a sacrificial lamb upon the altar of press freedom. Uh, he, and yet, the Chelsea Manning case does allow him to be cast thus. It's really complicated. You don't have to pick a side. But And, and again, to clarify on, on um, that tweet I read a moment ago, accusing me of not knowing what I was talking about when the charges that he faced in Sweden had allegedly been dropped. Here, here are the facts, OK? Um... The investigation into the rape allegation in Sweden can be resumed at any time before the limitation period expires, and that expiry will not be until August of next year, August 2020. The complainant of the alleged rape can request that the inv investigation be resumed, and yesterday her lawyer um, did exactly that. So after that request, the Swedish prosecuting body has now confirmed it is reviewing whether to resume the investigation and thereby... The extradition request. Um, uh, David Allen Green, who provides an exhaustive account of this on Twitter, adds, it is commendable that this was announced the same day as the arrest and the complainant's request. I'd add to that and say it's even more commendable that the Swedish judiciary 
has moved so quickly, given that they didn't seem to know that this was set to happen. Um, they seem to have been taken by surprise by yesterday's events. Um, and it is those Swedish allegations that I think we should all agree Assange should face. He hasn't been charged yet because Swedish criminal process only charges before trial. Again, a little bit robust with the first caller today, but we parted as friends. And, and my insistence that we actually know what we're talking about. I'm not Michael Gove. I don't think the country has had enough of experts. So the allegation was not dismissed, but put aside because of his non-availability. So I, 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 there you go. You see, you get you get a bunch of tweets from people that might be operating out of St. Petersburg claiming that the charges have been dropped. And it's simply not true. This is what fake news is designed to do, to create confusion around easily establishable facts. The facts are the prosecution or, or the investigation, the allegation, was put aside precisely because Julian Assange was hiding in a cupboard at the Ecuadorian embassy, or a very small room, given that I'm being pedantic about facts. I probably shouldn't embellish the... Uh, location of his self-imposed, self-imposed incarceration. Um, so the minute he is available, the possibility of resurrecting the allegation becomes real. And yesterday we saw the lawyer for one of the complainants do precisely that. The UK court now decides whether to grant prior priority to a Swedish extradition request or the US one. And David adds, in his opinion, and this is a, a legal opinion, the Swedish one is more likely because of the historic request and the pending limitation period. And that those are the facts. And yet social media, it's a fascinating example of, of, of a much, much wider mess, creates an environment in which people can say stuff like, the charges have been dropped, James, oh, no brain, whatever. And even though it's nonsense, and my previous temptation was to ignore it because it was nonsense... I'm increasingly wondering whether you have to call out this stuff because it's been deliberately designed to mislead. And all paths lead back to St. Petersburg, where the Internet Research Agency, according to, don't think that I've gone all David Icke on you, according to the United States intelligence community, describes a, a, an army of trolls devoted to supporting Russian actions in Ukraine that started to advocate for President-elect Trump as early as December 2015 doesn't take that much effort to join the dots, but when you do, the picture is not pretty. Bournemouth is, and Roger is there. Roger, what would you like to say? Oh, hello, James. Hello. Uh, what, I'd, what I'd like to say is that um, Assange should, should be sent to Sweden, uh, should be extradited to Sweden and clear his name or be found guilty of, of the charges before any thought of extraditing him to the US happens. Yes. And that, that, that's, that's how it should be. And I think that the, the extradition to um, the U.S. has, has sort of... Um, it, it's it's, it's um, almost cloaked or, or hidden the fact that, that um, he, he needs to answer these, these rape allegations. And it's hard to escape the conclusion that, that it was designed or it has been used to do that as well by some parties. I, I would agree with that, yes. And, and that is it. We, we, we leave the... Obviously, it's up to a UK court to decide where, whether they accept either of these extradition requests. And if they, they can only really accept one, because it, it, just time and space, the laws of time and space tell us he can only be in one place at any one time. Exactly. And I, what, what about the question of how comfortable you would be once the allegations in Sweden have been addressed in sending him back to Donald Trump's America? And presumably the reason why he got involved in the American presidential campaign was because he thought that a Donald Trump presidency might actually prove more amenable to his case than a, than a, than a Hillary Clinton one. Presumably, I, I, I don't know. I, I think that um, what he did to Hillary Clinton's campaign, uh, he should answer for. Um, but at the same time, um, Donald Trump seemed to love Wiki, Wiki, WikiLeaks uh, during his campaign, and now... Has has no recall on it, but that's that's Donald Trump all over. He has no recall on things that he no doesn't want to have anything. recall on. No, but, exactly. But, but, but I'm just speculating as it's, to what. It's selective, isn't it? it really is selective is very kind. Um, and and again, I, I'm going to read out a couple of these before I block them. But but here you go, at Mr. James B. That's me. Typical centrist. Assange has been nominated for the typical centrist. So I would suggest as. 
some grounds for wondering whether this um, internet research agency in St. Petersburg is now behind a lot of the more toxic pro-Jeremy Corbyn Twitter accounts that I have the profound pleasure and privilege of um, encountering on an almost daily basis. So centrist is one of the phrases they're trying to turn into an insult in the way that words like liberal and do-gooder and... Um, politically correct or good manners, all of these things have become insults. Assange has been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize every year since 2010. Yeah, but he exposed a paedophile ring that put Trump in power. Okay, I won't pick a side. Now, again, even a few months ago, I'd have said such weapons-grade ignorance is best ignored. But if the rest of the world isn't ignoring it, should we?